Okay, here we go. Going with a picture review of action that's been happening. And that's hardware for the fairings, clamps. This is some ordering for the rivets uh, from aircraft proofs. There's the fair damage fairing and pieces of it. I want it to be removed. There's the fairing we were trying to figure out if we wanted to paint it the army green uh, primer and install it on there so it had some old stuff. There it is in a natural aluminum color that it previously was and there's inside view of it of what it'll look like not really sure which direction we were going in trying to toss it around some ideas ultimately decided to go with the color of the frame the gray or battleship gray if you will and not get too cute with the paint scheme there's the brackets for the seat risers uh, due to frame tubing being upsized and different than what the casting would allow. I covered that in one of the previous videos. But that's a uh, fabrication and uh, pictures of what I was um, trying to accomplish and get done there. There it is, two dissimilar size tubings coped together. They're just laid out with a magnet and hold it in place, get it ready to tack together. Um, there's the cast, the original piece that uh, no longer fits with the repairs that were done to the frame. Um, uh, moving on, there's the fuselage and some pieces still hanging on the wall, waiting their turn to come off. Uh, some of the metal that just picked up. There's the catalog part numbers of what we were ordering for that seat riser brackets that will uh, allow the front seat to be installed. As soon as that gets done, primed and painted, uh, there's the dimensions for it, the official dimensions from the military. Uh, there's my beautiful wife sitting in the rear cockpit of the seat that's there. She just wanted to sit in it and see how it was going to be. She actually rode in this particular craft before. There's this uh, forward cockpit seat being disassembled and recorded, so I know how to put it back together without any issues. Uh, that was a data case, kind of like a glove box. Uh, a data plate that I had ordered another one and having that redone. There's some of the hardware. It goes on the front cockpit seat. It's cleaned up and ready to go back together. There is the seat. Uh, once again, just trying to take a picture of it. I don't know how it goes back together before the disassembly. Um, there's bits and pieces, different angles. They're same stuff, just different angles um, of the seat itself. There's the seat getting starting to get stripped down and to get cleaned up. Seat rails are off of it. And some of the stuff is taped up that's not going to receive any paint. There's the frame. It's done. The old frame is done. It's going up in the ceiling. Get it up out of the way. So it has some more floor space to work with. Um, had attached it to some rafters, wrapped some chains around the rafters up there, and then just suspended it. Don't want that thing falling down. Um, there's the rear cockpit seat, I think. There it is in, um, they're, they're about the same, a few little differences. In primer, there was the ladder going up above the ceiling so I could uh, get that frame with the chains on it up there. Um, cockpit panel is in the both there there are both of them so that was before so we're going backwards in time here wiring for the radio and main panel distribution panel firewall was off the old frame and onto the new one ladder going back up into the ceiling getting ready to suspend that other one there's the fuselage oh the one that's going to be used uh, and we're going, like I said before, going backwards in time. That previous picture was before the panels were put on. The panels had just gotten installed. Going with the fuel selector there. Swap that out with a modern ball valve. There's a piece that broke on the inner plane connector for the epinage, which is uh, the rudder control, so it's a lever that goes back there. There it is showing it that's worn down. Uh, and then when it gets stressed on it, then it can crack. That's a cast piece. There's a new piece that is all aluminum. Um, it is not cast, 
and it will not wear, it should not wear in tube. So that spring and actually the safety wire there actually rubs into the cast. So here are some bell cranks on the firewall. Um, just taking, took that apart. Uh, make sure to know how to go back together. Uh, the Amphenol fittings for the tack drive. I was trying to make sure to get that wires. There's the drawings for the uh, bell cranks. Um, they're a little bit different depending upon which engine you use, so you have to pay attention to that. Um, and I'm not sure. I think that's after I had taken all that apart, put it back together, detailed it. Using a multimeter to make sure we get the right wires and the right land in the right destination. Uh, radio main panel. Uh, repairs to the back side of the radio. It had a weak point there, so stiffened it up with an extra bracket. So maybe that won't come apart again. Then primer, getting ready to paint it. Of course, when you paint it, then you put it back to something else that's painted, and looks, the other stuff looks like crap. There's the push-to-talk intercom system. Back to fabricating that shutoff valve, which had to drill and tap some 440 holes. An offset 8-inch uh, pin. That's not easy to do, you know, it's not dead center, so you have to purposely offset it. Um, that's where it goes, right there on the frame. Pictures of the old frame, not sure why. Uh, there's the part of the fabrication of the fuel shutoff uh, and doing offsetting that uh, hole. So there it is, and it's complete there. Had to, there's quite a bit of fabrication on that, actually. Um, so, just making sure it gets put in straight and level and where it won't bind. I uh, used the original brackets and hardware, and all I changed was the valve itself. I didn't want to change the other hardware. I want to keep all that stock. That's that red Bell Watts looking water regulator, but that's actually a uh, cork ball cone inside that that turns well actually now today's they manufacture stainless steel with uh, Viton seats so it's a lot better shut off see it leaks right there and it leaked before um, so it's a little bit safer now more modern just updated it uh, it's just a brass valve that I got at one of the box stores and then adapted it with the same height um, had to work on the bushings, reducer bushings, and didn't have that cast piece like that one, so I had to reproduce all that. Um, so we'll see how it goes. There was in a process of fabricating that valve, um, just working it up, just trying to lay it out there, um, make sure I get all the angles of the dangles correctly. There it is, its size that's in the original bracket. Um, the back of one of the panels, the Amphenol fittings put up. There is the main control panel and bus uh, tidying up all that wire. There's the intercom system, one of the jacks for the headsets. Um, back to the wiring there, trying to wire tie up all the wires and make it look like something, like somebody cares. Laying out the wire harness there. Um, to land all the, I think that was the intercom actually wiring right there. I'm not sure what that is, that's part of parts. There's the Amphenol fitting. Um, actually, you just can't buy that thing. I guess you could if you could find a source, but on eBay, there's a lot of different parts and pieces so you can mix and match and put together. And once again, those went to the tack drive. So that was a homemade piece that was original that were utilized originally, it's not an original piece. There's the uh, electrical for the mags, the shut off switch. The firewall before it was transferred over. This, this picture is for orientation of that amphenol fitting. There is the linkage for the mag switch. Um, that's another terminal destination. I was into the wires. Once again, we're going backwards in time of how the fuselage got to where it is today. Um, we're just picking pieces off the shelf. There's the landing gear. That was actually done a year ago and rebuilt. Um, 
and it'll go on four or five more steps down the road in this project. Part of the old frame with old pieces on it before I was getting into the electrical. There's one of the broken wings of the incident, uh, which is pretty much just turned into a bench now <laughs> until it gets its turn. A uh, pictorial of the wire ties and how it was laid out. This is for the location of a panel. So it was, and there it is, it's been removed, but I'm trying to find out where to locate it at before I just start tearing into stuff um, and get it approximately where it goes. That was one of the broke fittings on the old frame. That's why we're switching over to a different frame, which is actually in a little bit better shape. Um, part of the wiring layout, uh, there's the new frame, which is uh, the new 80-year-old frame, the replacement frame, let's go with that. There they were side by side. Um, yeah, that would have been, yeah, there's a panel, there's a shock absorber on it. Uh, trying to lay out the linkage right there to the uh, electrical on-off switch. And you can see how dirty it was on the other frame. Well, not dirty, it just wasn't detailed. It's detailed out a little bit better now. So checking in to the, that is actually a primer for the uh, primer line. There is a on-off bracket off the old frame. Laying out dimensions right there, make sure you know where all the brackets and bracing goes, because it worked before and it should, if you get it kind of in the same spot again, it should work again. Or at least get you in a ballpark to, so you can fine tune it. Um, just laying out, making sure all the lines go where they belong or where they need to land. And this was part of the trim before. I'm not sure which frame. No, that's on the new frame. So the trim cabling, which goes back on the elevator, so you can trim and keep, let the airplane fly itself, sort of. Uh, just the pulleys, making sure I'd route the cabling back the way it was. Uh, sometimes the official drawings get a little bit hard to read. Turnbuckle before it got cleaned up. Um, Got just transferred them over, then I took them off. This is a little bit cleaner. This is a transmission on the back by the Epinage. Um, engine control installation. I think this is for the bell cranks on the firewall. Yeah, there they are. Uh, so I was just trying to get pictures and to make sure get the stuff back to where it belongs. Need the land uh, orientation of some brackets right there that were on the old frame. There's the transmission for the epinage on the old frame um, and some linkage as just documentation and also had the manuals out too and the official drawings. So that was all good. There it is on the original frame. You kind of tell because it's all dusty and not detailed. Uh, yeah. We had some tape on it when it was disassembled after the incident down in Tennessee. Or it's moved to come up here. Um, actually, hadn't planned on moving up here yet, but here we are with throttle quadrants and um, just taking some pictures, trying to make sure I get them back the same way they were. The handles, if you'll see all the um, deterioration in it, that was due to the they were dusters, so that was due to the um, chemicals being used. So there's one that's not clean, there's one that's clean uh, or detailed out. A couple more had spare parts. There's, I actually have four of those. Two of them are dissimilar. Actually, one of them's dissimilar for sure, and then another piece is. There's the, I want to say turnstile, that's not it. <laughs> the uh, rotisserie that's. Homemade, so we'll put the frame back on that. And actually, it's sitting on it right now, so you can actually access the stuff with some ease and just rotate it around. Back on the throttle quadrants, which is for the throttle and the mixture. And that's some linkage that goes through the firewall. It was a little hard, but it wasn't set up level, so it actually works a lot better now. Um, that's when the, before the firewall got moved over. Um, and this, once again, this was just 
orientation history um, for these parts as they came off. Uh, so I'd have kind of an idea where they went when they went back on and how it was. This made life easier transferring it over from one frame to the other. Um, yeah, you can kind of see stuff snicked up there. So this was off the old frame and as I moved it over, cleaned it up, made sure it was detailed, you know, look about halfway nice once <laughs> until we get it running and we'll see how it gets. And I've actually nicked it up some, putting it on the new one, so there's some touch up work to do. But, um, it'll be a working show plane, so we'll see, how, we'll see how it works out. There's the throttle quadrant cleaned up. Uh, then we have the panel for the trim tab, I believe, in the rear. Um, just some more orientation pictorial data to sh remind me how it came apart. I was trying to be, uh, take stuff off, clean it up, move it over, put it back on. Uh, you know, so I wouldn't forget what went where, how, when, and location, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it does matter which way those cables go, right or left, or up or down, or um, and you want to be able to move with ease, so when you're actually, those are flag controls, that stuff has to be right. And it's pretty easy to get it mixed up. So, yeah, just more pictorials. The right there we were with the trim. Um, there's the port side of the firewall. Actually, was looking at that uh, throttle quadrants and that linkage there, seeing how all that was run. There were some torpedo static lines for this particular aircraft. Uh, looking down on the main cockpit on the trim knob um, just making sure to get the cabling run right uh, the orientation of all the hardware and actually the controls so there's some of the pulleys that goes in the back for it and before they land at their destination on the control surfaces and there's the dimensions trying to you know what bracket goes where how far up down back forward you know what rotation its orientation where it's at um, this was just doc all documentation of hardware um here we are back on the landing gear my landing gear was a bugger that stuff's well that's some of the old landing gear right there actually some spare parts and back on the brackets of uh, just miscellaneous stuff. What, what's going where? Paused right there, just thinking about, I got a silence call that came in, it's covering up part of the screen, so it makes it hard to see what we're looking at here. Um, just trying to do a voiceover and some edit, playing with the editing on some of this stuff, so maybe I can get better at this whole YouTube. There's the floorboards in it. One's clean, one's dirty. Um, yeah, you can see the difference. And, uh, took scotch bright and some steel wool to them and cleaned them up. Um, hard to do after it's all assembled. A lot easier, you know, as you're, as you're going along and doing it. So, and detailing it out, because once all that's in there, it's, it's tough to get to it. Well, this is on the replacement frame. We won't call it the new one, it's 80 years old. Um, working on just detailing stuff out. Would have liked to have had the stickers for that brake cylinder, or yep, but they I contacted them, but they wouldn't just send me that. I think they want to sell me a whole new one or a rebuilt one. That cylinder's fine, it just leaked and has an issue with the just, just sticker. <laughs> it's, it's fully functional, it just doesn't look detailed, you know, as from the port to starboard, just the one is messed up. But if I could get the identifying marks on it, I would do that. There it is, you can kind of tell the difference between the two. 
So we're just moving along. Uh, as I said before, we're going backwards in time, so there's less and less. Uh, that was the control lock. So it wasn't exactly working out the way it was. I did, I did change it a little bit, move that hole a little bit. Um, so it would be a lot smoother in its operation. So you gotta remember there was a war going on, so they were just doing mass production, trying to get pilots trained and you know make it halfway safe, but get it out the door and keep it going. So there's less and less on this frame as we go. Like I said, you know, the third time before I mentioned it. <laughs> so there was the drawings in the manuals. Uh, to also help me when I moved it over and then you take all that out change all that hardware uh, On each piece and you totally disassemble it and then now it's like oh crap, you know, what goes where? How did I do that? And so you got drawings and pictures and go back That was carb heat that red handle and I think that was the original frame where Lance goes through the firewall and for the forward engine controls. Um, just making sure it can, you know, like all, like most of the other pictures, just making sure it can put it back the way it's supposed to be. And a lot of nuts and bolts on these things, so just try to make sure. There it is on the new frame, cleaned up, looking a little better. Um, Throttle quadrant, we're back into that linkage. That was a part before. Um, looks like it, that appeared, that was a forward cockpit. So it looked like that one, this was actually a duster, so they had a big tank, hopper tank for the chemicals, so they could spray the crops with it. And then it just got put back in there, so. Right there's a chart for hardware and sizing, which makes life a lot easier. Um, so there's the control locks as it goes down and locks in. So when airplanes are sitting out in a field or when you stop, you know, and the gust winds come along and they'll mess with the control surfaces. So that just locks them and keeps that from banging and tearing tearing itself up and the wind sitting there flapping them um, you do want them to be move with ease but when they're moving with ease and they're sitting there in the wind it's just moving around that's that safety chain on the rudder spring the that is the rudder tube which you know goes underneath both cockpits. It's connected to the joystick. And there's some of the uh, hardware that will attach all that to the frame. So that, that's what it looked like. It was kind of beat up. So just disassemble all that. Um, make sure you get some primer on it, and then put some paint, do some touch-up paint to it, and try to make it look like something. That's a gust lock. That red handle there. Some of the cabling, uh, I think that's the original frame. Right there before it was taken and transferred over to the replacement frame. Um, just hardware and a bracket, that was a gust lock. There's the original frame, it's got less on it. Um, stuff hadn't been transferred over yet. It was a good feeling when that started getting more and more and more on that frame. There's a turtle deck on it, which is part of the fairing assembly, which has to come back off because I got to get that in primer. Uh, there's a panel that was on the original, this is called original frame. We're getting back toward the, oh, that was that broke interplane connector and a bushing and so you can see where that safety chain will wear into it and where that thin piece and then when it gets stressed, it'll crack it, it's cast. That's what happens, that's a pretty common break on them all. Um, it won't fall out of the sky due to that, but it does make it hard to, you have to steer it with the brakes. There's a clevis point, just some more hardware, making sure it goes back on the way it's supposed to, the way it was, uh, 
drawn up in the manuals and on the, they didn't have CAD back then, but where it was drawn up, where it was designed and using aircraft safety maintenance procedures. You know, there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. That's the rudder tube or elevator tube right there. Sorry, elevator tube. Some of the fairing brackets, which getting into now, um, that was transferring them over. That's the fairing, so those brackets attached to that. Some people call them formers, stringers, birdcage, but it's official nomenclature is fairings. Uh, just bracket associated with the pulleys and cabling on there. This was just, uh, some of the tape was to keep from scarring it up. Some of it was to point out where it got nicked on the new one. And you know, when you go to touch it up, it just makes it easier to find it. Of course, some of it will be missed. Some of it will be touched up. And that's just how it goes. You know, try not to tear it up too bad when you're putting it back together. So this is the back, that, that's the uh, elevator tube there which is connected to the joystick. There the fuselage has been canvas taken off of it, of the original one, but the fairing was still on, so I hadn't gotten to that yet and put it up on the wall, which is now currently at the time of this recording. Once again, going backwards in time, but um, fairing is back off the wall, making repairs to where it was beat up pretty good. That's the replacement frame some of the clevises that are going on for the other one. There's the, I want to call it the skin, I guess. There it is coming off of the original frame. You know, just cut it across the back and then just kind of peeled it off. Uh, looking for dimensions there on what goes where to make sure when it gets transferred over, it'll be in the right spot, more or less. They have to make some adjustments, I'm thinking, but we'll see. Uh, peeling that, that's actually canvas with paint, you know, filler, paint, uh, sealer. Um, I think this was, oh yeah, we were working on brake, uh, flexible brake lines down the landing gear right there. When I say we, I mean I. So we were using the a and fittings there. Uh, trying to figure that out, manufacturing our own. Um, how it worked so just put the tube over it screwed that's a pretty easy that's that's pretty easy fitting I did find a trick though to uh, on the hose itself to trim that back make it install a little easier uh, you certainly don't want no issues with that there's the canvas on it what it looked like one of the panels that was the original frame here we were rebuilding the, I did I did get a lot of help with this uh, landing gear I did I did some myself but that's pressed in stuff and that's a 20 ton press I had I think there's some more pictures as we go along let will show that there was the rotisserie that was a borrowed one before a manufactured loan um, that was the borrowed one that is the replacement frame in the paint booth so it's been sandblasted Bad tubes replaced and welded. There was some bent ones. Uh, it's getting primered and painted there. So this was 10 months ago from where I'm at right now. And the last piece is going back on it. 10 months later is the fairing and then it's ready to, to get covered again. So that's how long it's taken or how little time it's taken, you know, this one. Glass half full, glass half empty. There's just some of the welds. Uh, for the guy that welded it up, man, he, he does some really, really good work. That was an engine that came on that frame when I got it. Um, that was taken apart, going to make a coffee table out of. So there's some wing hardware, lower wing hardware. Uh, looking, once again, looking for orientation. There's brakes, brake shoes, rims uh, on the landing gear. So I utilized my old stuff. Um, and just cleaned it up, moved, you know, moved it over. There it was, that's where it drug it across the blacktop during the incident when it broke. 
There's an inside shot of it. Uh, there we were rebuilding it, taking the springs apart. I mean, took this thing completely apart. Had to go through two or three sets before I could come up with some good ones. There was a lot of deterioration. Um, when you start pressing out those, you know, that's the sponsor, and you start pressing out or apart some of those that's been pressed together for 80 years, you know, you're getting into some a job. That is new old stock. That's a rebuilt one there, that, and that was the old cloth. There is the true barn find. So that's the upper wings, and that was part of the fuselage or fairing assembly that came with that purchase. There's the original wheel and wheel cover from the incident. Now we're starting to get into some of the, that's original you know, primer. You know, 80 years old. So here we were. We were rebuilding this landing gear. This was a year and a half ago. Um, pressing that apart. That's a 20 ton jack. A lot of pressure going on there uh, on that thing. Um, and then trying to make it orientated straight so it won't have no slop in it. Make sure it all goes back together. You don't want to mess up with this part. You know, that's the actual landing gear. Um, some original stamps on it, part numbers. Uh, just trying to jig it up in there, keep it safe. Uh, you know, you gotta make your own brackets. That is original primer, you know, from 80 years ago when this thing was put together. Um, so there are the scissors, so that keeps the wheels pointed in the right direction and straight. There, so. That's it, and we'll stop this now and uh, continue on. Thanks.